Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect, and today we're gonna transform this photo from flat, boring daylight to dramatic moonlit night with Photoshop. The idea here is very simple. First of all, we're gonna create the base for the nightly atmosphere. Secondly, which is the most important thing, we're gonna paint the light manually. And for this, I would highly recommend using a Wacom tablet because that way it will be extremely helpful for you to have more accuracy, much more than ever than a mouse. Not only that, you will have the ability to use pressure sensitivity to control the amount of light just by using the pressure in your hand, thus allowing you to paint the light more realistically. The one that I am using is the Wacom Intuos Pro medium size and by the way if you want to learn how to set up your Wacom tablets you can watch this video. After the dodging and burning, all we need is a little bit of color grading and overlays to get the effect that we are going for. I am ready, I hope so are you, so without any further ado, let's get started. Let's make the day a bear and a fun, growing up is just a trap. Back in the brilliant world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Let's start by creating the nightlight atmosphere or in other words, step number one, creating the base. Now you can do this in a lot of ways. One of the most simplest ways I could find for this one was simply use a color lookup table. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup right there. Now all you need to choose here is, as the name suggests, night from day. Have a look, such a nice base, isn't it? Now, I wanna remove it a little bit from the highlights to have some dimension. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. What will that do? Open up the layer styles dialog box. Now inside of that, what do we need to move? Inside of Blendif, the right slider of the underlying layer. Why? Because we wanna remove the bright areas of the underlying layer or the layer which is beneath it from the current layer, right? So take the slider from right to left. Now this is very harsh, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and then take the right half all the way to the right hand side. I just wanted to add a slight highlight, just like this, because on top of this we're gonna add one more color lookup table, hit OK for now. Click on the adjustment layer icon one more time and then choose color lookup again and this time again let's choose night from day. Now have a look, isn't that fantastic? Now as we learned, when it comes to adjustment layers, we can change anything anytime. So let's go back to the Blendif section of the previous night from day, color lookup, double click on the right hand side of the layer and we wanna change it a little bit, all right? So let's take it a little bit more to the left hand side, something like this. This looks natural. Once you're satisfied, just hit OK. There you have it, such a nightly scene. I think maybe we can add some spice to it and for that, let's create one more color lookup table. Click on the topmost layer right here to add it on the top and then click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup again. And this time, let's add a tinge of sunset to it. Late sunset, that looks nice. However, it's kinda too much. Let's decrease it to about, let's say, how about 30%. Here's the before, here's the after. I like that color. Now if you look closely at the grass, you will see that the elephant does look like it's walking at the night. The sky is a little nightly, but the grass needs a little bit of modification. It needs a change in color. So I don't wanna change the color from the top, but from the very beginning. So we need to add a hue saturation adjustment layer just above the background layer. So first of all, make sure that the background layer is selected and then click on the adjustment layer icon and this time again, choose hue saturation. What is the original color of the grass? Yellows, right? So we need to choose yellows from the drop down, right there, and we can expand the range that it's selecting. And now let's change the hue and saturation. Let's play with it. See if we take the hue to the left, it makes more sense. So I'm gonna set the hue to about minus 47, minus 49, that looks okay, but it's too colorful. And the color looks so inconsistent. What do we do? Double click on the symbol of the hue saturation adjustment layer and simply decrease the saturation. But uh, we made changes in the hue, right? What happened to it? We made changes in the yellows not in the master. So we need to get back to yellows. Click on the drop down and choose yellows and simply decrease the saturation. I'm gonna set it to about minus 65, 66. Let's see how that looks. Now that looks like something. Now there you go. As you can see, a nice base is ready. All we need to do for organization purposes is group every adjustment layer that creates the base into base. So select the hue saturation adjustment layer, hold the shift key, select the topmost adjustment layer and then press control or command G. This is now a group, double click on the text and let's name it base. Now we seem to have a pretty decent starting point, but again, it still looks flat, right? This brings us to step number two, which is paint the light. 
So first off comes the highlights and for the highlights, let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer as usual. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now inside of the curves, all we need to do is to click on the middle, create a point in the middle and then take it up so high, just like this. Once you're happy with this, of course, you won't be happy with this anyway. But once it's bright, you can click on the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. This will invert the mask. Now you can take the brush. Now this is very crucial. Let's pay attention. We need to make sure that we are using the soft round brush. And once we have selected that, we need to change the flow to pen pressure if you're using a Wacom tablet. That will allow you to control the intensity of the brush with just the pressure of your hand. So all we have to do is to go to window and then brush settings. Now inside of this, let's go ahead and check transfer. Now select transfer to change the settings and let's set the opacity to off. I don't want opacity control. I just want flow control and set the flow to pen pressure. If you want to have more control over the intensity, you can also set the opacity. That's totally upon you. Uh, I'm going to show it to you anyway. You can also set both the flow and the opacity to pen pressure so that you can control both with just the pen pressure and set the minimum to zero so that you can have zero opacity and zero flow when you're pressing very, very extremely light. All right. That's fine. Once you have set it to those numbers, all you have to do is to make sure that inside of the brush tip shape, the hardness is at zero. And before you begin to paint, if you are using a Wacom tablet, I would highly recommend to set the flow at about five to 10%. If you're not using a Wacom tablet and doing it with the mouse, it's going to take you a while, but you can set the flow for a mouse from one to 2%. You will be able to have a little control, but that way, if you're doing it with a mouse, it's going to take you a lot longer. If you're using it with a Wacom, you can set the flow to as high as 10 and just paint lightly or softly on areas where you need less light on areas where you need more light, just press harder. That's it. So I'm going to set my flow to about 5%. If you want to be extremely careful, if you're doing it fast, you can set it to 10%. Now let's go ahead and zoom it in and start painting according to the direction of light. So for this example, let's assume that the light is coming from the top a little bit slanted. So I'm going to show you the direction of light. So for a moment, let's set it to this. So light is going to come through this direction and this is just for demonstration. All right. And according to it, we're going to paint on the elephant. So let's go ahead and delete this. This was just for demonstration. Make sure the mask is selected flow. I'm going to set it to about 5%. Now let's go ahead and zoom it in and paint accordingly. And by the way, just a quick little tip. I have set the brush size to be controlled by W and E. So when I press W, the brush becomes smaller. When I press E, the brush becomes harder. That way I don't have to completely move my hand to the bracket keys and then change the brush size and move the hand to this side because this side you have the control alt shift and all those other controls. So you can do that too. If you don't know how to do it, you can always check out this video that I had done previously on setting up your tablet and keyboard. All right. Anyway, so let's decrease the brush size a little bit and start painting. Also make sure that your foreground color is white. And if you're having difficulty painting in a certain direction, you can always hold the R key, just hold it, rotate it. And then when you release the R key, it will get back to the brush. If it doesn't get back to the brush, you can select the brush back again. If you want to reset it, you can hold the R key again and then click on reset view and then release the R key. It will get you back to the brush. I'm going to speed up this process because this can get pretty monotonous. Now, once we have done the highlights, similarly, we will do the shadows. So click on the adjustment layer icon again, and this time again, choose curves and take it down. Click in the middle, take it down. Once it is dark enough, click on the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. And similarly, let's start painting on the dark areas with the brush. 
white as the foreground color, flow at 5% and all the same settings for the brush as we had for the highlights. Let us name these two curves adjustment layers respectively. This one was for the shadows. And this one is highlights. Just for organization. After finishing up the highlights and shadows, it does look pretty amazing, isn't it? However, I think there has to be a little bit more brightness in the ground as well. So we can add a little more highlights by creating one more curves adjustment layer. And then just brighten it up just a little bit. And then select the mask. Press Ctrl or Command I. Now take the brush. Flow can be 5%. Increase the brush size and then maybe you can do a couple strokes on the ground. Just here and there. Let's have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Just a little bit of, you know, brightening. Now it looks better. But still, the overall image is pretty dark. We need to increase the whites. Also, we can do this with one more curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves again. And this time, take this slider from the right to the left. You can take it to the point where the mountain just begins. Yeah, that looks cool. It looks too bright, but that's fine. We can control that later. This is fine. All right. Now beneath it, we can add some darkness. Let's create one more curves adjustment layer just below it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves and we're going to click on the middle and drag it down. That way we are still keeping the extremely bright areas bright and just lowering down the midtones like that. All right. Now we can spare the elephant right here by selecting the mask and then taking the brush black as the foreground color and then just dab above the elephant. You can also increase the flow and turn off pressure sensitivity or you can just select soft round again. It will set it to defaults. So I'm going to click on the elephant just like this and now erase the extras. By the way, you can always decrease the opacity, but this time we need to decrease the opacity of the mask. We need to just decrease the mask density. So make sure that the mask is selected and then go to window and then make sure properties is selected. And then all we have to do is to click on right there and decrease the density of the mask. Slowly and gradually increase it to the point where you like it. So I'm going to leave it at about 56, 57 or about 55. Let's keep it at that and we are good to go. Now with every light comes the shadow. So we need to definitely create a very soft shadow for the elephant. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer. And this time we're going to take it down just like that. One more time. Now inside of the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. It turns it black. Now let's take the brush. This is a very simple shadow. So we're going to take a soft round brush, make it this larger, make sure that the foreground color is white and just dab in the middle, very middle. Have a look at the mask. It is just a circle, soft circle, right? Now press Ctrl or Command D and just flatten it and place it beneath the elephant. You can make it wider if you want to. I'm going to keep it that way. And there you are, just a soft shadow. Also, we want to remove the shadows from some areas. Make sure the mask is selected, take the brush, black as the foreground color, and then just erase it from these areas. Alrighty. Now you can, of course, decrease the opacity of this one. I would keep it at about 40 ish. Now, once we are done with all of these highlights and shadows, it's always great to group it up to keep it organized. So select the first adjustment layer right there, hold the shift key, select the last one that deals with highlights and shadows. All of them are now selected. Press Ctrl or Command G and just rename it to lights. Simple. So now most of the heavy lifting is done. All we have to do is step number three, color grading and overlays. Let's start by adding an overlay right here at the top because the elephant is too bright. There has to be a light source, right? Which is of course, in this case, the moon. So we're gonna add the glare of the moon. So click on the adjustment layer icon and this time let's go ahead and choose the gradient. So click on the gradient, choose a gradient, which is foreground to transparent or any color to transparent. We're going to change that later. So left hand side, let's make sure that the color is white. So click on the color, make sure it is white, hit OK. At the top slider, once you click on the top slider, it should be at opacity 100. On the right hand side top slider, the opacity should be zero and the color can be blue. 
select the bottom slider for the color and we're going to choose a bluish color for this one to go with the scene or you can just take a sample from here as well and then modify that once you're happy with this hit ok hit ok again and change the style from linear to radio now here's the great part you can actually move it anywhere you want isn't that crazy so now i'm going to change the scale i'm going to increase the scale so that the circle is larger you're going to choose a very high scale what about 350 it is huge i know but you can move it up something like this or i'm going to just decrease something like this makes sense hit ok now to add a little more drama to it let's go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer with the same amount of brightening at the top as in the elephant so we're going to click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves and take it up just like that this looks fine now click on the mask and then select the gradient and this time choose a gradient from black to white and then let's draw a gradient from black to white bottom to top something like this yeah that looks nice have a look here's the before here's the after creates that nice mood for the scene now i think it's time to do a little bit of color grading on the scene we don't have to work so hard or do something so manual. Just apply a color lookup table. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. And the one we're going to use here is horror blue. Because it's blue. So why not try it? There. And have a look at the scene. Isn't that quite amazing? So I'm going to go ahead and decrease the opacity because of course this is too much. So we're going to set it to about... 55, 54, that looks fine. You can also go crazy and increase it even more for a more moody kind of look. This is even better. Now I'm going to use a super dramatic mist brush that I downloaded from Envato Elements. Let me show that to you. Have a look right here. 100 mist Photoshop stamp brushes. Now if you're already a member, you can download all of these brushes at no extra cost as well. However, if you're looking for a free alternative, you can always go to brusheasy.com. They have a lot of fog brushes as well. But if you're looking for good quality stuff, they always come at a premium. And if you look at all the stock website, I prefer Envato Elements because unlimited downloads of everything from images to stock videos to graphics to even Photoshop actions and brushes, even 3D models. They have got crazy stuff. I'm actually a paying member. If you want the link to the brushes and some of my favorite actions, you can go ahead and check them out in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the brush. I think I'm going to go with 117. This looks nice. But this brush is a little smaller. What do we do? Just make it a little bigger. This is fog anyway. So I'm going to make it this big and create a brand new layer at the top. And let's go ahead and choose the foreground color as white. It's already white. So now we're going to just dab. Make sure that the opacity and flow are at 100. Blend mode is normal. All right. Just dab in right there. Wow. Isn't that fantastic? You can always go ahead and just try it the second time from the very bottom. See what looks good to you. You can just apply it from here or you can try it from there. That's totally upon you. I'm going to leave it at that. Maybe I'm going to try it even lower just like this. That looks good. But there's a problem. The smoke color is looking different. It should be something of this color, right? So how do we change the color to that color? Simple. Create a solid color adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon. Choose solid color. And doesn't matter what color that is right now, hit OK. And then hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the line between these two layers. This creates a clipping mask. Now you can change this color by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer and then pick this color. Simple, isn't it? And you can just adjust it accordingly. See what suits best for you. Maybe make it a little desaturated. Once you're happy with this, hit OK. Done. So here's the before. Here's the after. You can also decrease the opacity of this color if you want it to have less color. So for me, I think I'm going to keep the opacity to about 90. That looks good to me. Now to add even more drama to this image, let's create one more curves adjustment. Layer. I know it's a lot of curves. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. I'm going to take it up again one more time. This time, let's create a little contrast, something like this. Now, select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. I'm going to take a huge brush. Take the brush, uh, a very huge brush, zoom out, and we're going to choose a regular soft round brush. And then just dab with white right there. Look at the drama. I know it's kind of too much. We're going to decrease the opacity. Just gradually increase it to about 54. Or maybe let's go for 58. There you have it. Interesting, isn't it? 
Now, after that, you can, of course, apply as many overlays as you want. But that's it for me. Maybe I'm going to make changes later. And this, my friend, is the final result. And do not forget, for organization purposes, let's group them all out. Select the first adjustment layer. Select the last adjustment layer that had to do with overlays by holding the shift key and clicking on it. And then press Control or Command G. And let's name this overlays and color grading, whatever you want to name it. I'm just typing random stuff. Doesn't matter. So that's how you change a flat boring day to dramatic moonlit night in Photoshop. All you have to do is to remember three basic steps. Step number one, create that base. No matter what type of scene you're creating, first you have to create that ground base on which you're going to build upon. So in this case, we just simply used some color lookup tables to create that night base. On top of that, we painted the highlights and shadows using curves adjustment layers and masking. It's very preferable that you have a Wacom tablet so that you can control the light properly. And after that, all we had to do is to apply some overlays and do some color grading. And also to add some mist, we used some brushes using Envato elements. You can also use Brush Easy if you're looking for free alternatives. And at the end, it's up to you as to how many overlays or gradients you want to add. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned. In. And I don't know what's happening to me. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a very lot of fun. Growing up is just a trap.